events soon to transpire on this planet will dry up the options for the lukewarm. Do not think too much about what you are teaching your family, for what in you is merely casualness about Christianity may in your children become hostility. For what you have not defended, your children may reject angrily. Do not reflect on the practicality of gospel standards either, standards such as abstaining from alcohol. For if you do, a surf of statistics will wash over you, confirming that abstinence is ultimately the only cure for alcoholism. You will also see that the living of one protective principle of the gospel is better than a thousand compensatory governmental programs, which programs are so often like straightening deck chairs on the Titanic. Do not think either about the doctrine that you are a child of God, or if you do, it will be the beginning of belonging. Do not dare to read the Book of Mormon seriously, or you may suddenly realize that it is inlaid with incredibly important insights from a millennium of sacred history. Do not let yourself reflect too much on the social, political, and economic indicators that suggest the gathering storm, lest you realize that there is an inseparable connection between the keeping of the commandments and the well-being of society. Joshua didn't say, choose you next year whom you will serve. He spoke of this day, while there is still daylight, and before the darkness becomes more and more normal. When Jesus called his first disciples, the scriptures record that they left their ships and their nets straightway. They didn't ask to join Jesus after the fishing season. They didn't even delay their response in order to make just one more catch. They left straightway. Act, my brothers and sisters, for once the soul is tilted toward belief, and once there is even a desire to believe, then marvelous things begin to happen. Indeed, one of the most cruel games anyone can play is the not yet game, hoping to sin just a bit more before ceasing, to enjoy the praise of the world a little longer before turning away from the applause, to win just once more in the wearying sweepstakes of materialism, to be chased, but not yet, to be good neighbors, but not now. The truth is that not yet usually means never. And if you sense that one day, every knee shall bow, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord, why not do so now? For in the coming of that collective confession, it will mean much less to kneel down when it is no longer possible to stand up.